What you up to? Oh, making some liquid fertilizer for the garden. This deer is leftover. It's not root beer, trust me. You wouldn't want to drink it. This here is leftover worm. Well, not worm. It's leftover. Leftover uh, weed weed mushings from last year that I never got to use. So I'm putting four jugs of it in a trash can. Actually, I didn't shake this one up. If you don't shake it up, that crap will set at the bottom. But I'll show you later in the year how I'll make this stuff. But right now, I'm making up some fertilizer for the uh, garden down below from the tour from Tuesday, the 31st of May, um, which was last night. I'm going to dump four jugs of this in. This basically just puts minerals back in the ground, back in the soil. That soil down there is not the best in the world. And I know this stuff here works for really, really good for fertilizer. Um, so it's your homemade fertilizer? Yeah. Nothing from the store? Nope. It's just weeds. It's just a bunch of weeds put in a bucket. Enough to burn that. Then I'll put water in it. I'll fill up with water. I'll run the bubbler. I'll run a bubbler. I don't always run a bubbler, but I will this time. Um, just because it's a soul. And stinky. Very stinky. Think I'll step back a step or two. She likes to smell of it so much. That's why she's stepping back. So this here's alfalfa pellets. I'll dump about that much in there. Pretzel rod for it. Now here is fertilizer that I mix up, and I usually use this in the holes, as you've seen. You never saw me mix it up, but um, you saw me use it in the, putting the holes in the in the uh, tomatoes and under everything else I plant. We'll put that in here. What, what this is, what that fertilizer is, but what it is is um, worm castings that we harvested, um, worm castings, it's uh, Epsom salt, it's um, blood and bone meal, and um, some uh, trace minerals, rock dust type stuff I get from from the uh, local nursery supply store. That's what the fertilizer is. I'll show you how I'll mix it later. So with this, if you want to look inside here, it's just bubbling already with just that. So you know it's doing some good already, right? So this I'm going to stick in here. I put it in there so when I dump the stuff out of the watering can, it won't splinter. Then that I'll just throw back in the compost and done. You don't have to mix it this way. You can use it straight like I've had it in them other jugs if you want to. You don't need to add anything else to it. I just want to. You can just do whatever. Make it your own. The alfalfa gives it nitrogen. And it's not sprayed. They don't spray alfalfa with pesticides or herbicides rather. So I know they're safe, they won't kill my garden. Once it gets bubbling, it'll start smelling better. Though. All the inner rodent bacteria that's in there will die off, and then all the good anaerobic bacteria will start going. But the anaerobic bacteria is not going to harm you none. It'll die when it gets in the air, so it's not going to hurt nothing. You don't really need to let it, it's still want a bunch of 
mosquitoes or something in there just laying their eggs and dropping larvae all over the place. We plug it in, it's bubbling, I feel it vibrating. That's just a aquarium pump. I think I logged off of Amazon several years ago. So I'll let it bubble like that overnight. Tomorrow evening when I get home from work, I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so it's been two days since I started this. Last night I got home, it was raining, and then we took stuff to the auction. So, we wasn't here. So I want to look and see what it looks like tonight. Take the cover off. Pump's still running, I can feel it vibrating. Because we don't need it on no more. Oh my. It smells good and ripe. Oh my god. <coughs> <laughs> it ain't that bad really. Yeah it is. No, it really it isn't. I'll let that in there. It's floating, which I didn't think it would, but it is. I'll just fill these jugs. Actually I'll take that out. Just take those down to the garden and water a couple of the sickly looking plants and we'll take you along to show you what it looks like. Alright, these here's uh, the first couple six or eight in this rose patty pan squash. They're not real bad. They got some buck damage, but they're not terrible. So I'll just give them a little drink. Probably mix up another batch and then I'll put it on a backpack sprayer and fold your feed these. Try to get them come back good. This here will help them though. I've done, have, I didn't do this at all last year, but I've done it before. Right there's a cucumber beetle, just flew away. down zucchini. These weren't the healthiest plants when I planted them, but some of them will probably be fine. Some of them will probably need to be replaced. Then there's still weeds in there too. We have an air it's probably trash. You just pull it out and put a couple seeds in the ground. But years ago and I haven't done it last year I didn't do it at all and we started having little some small issues with some plants so we need to start doing some more of course this ground down here has never been never been messed with really for the most part bugs won't kill healthy plants they won't eat healthy plants so if you get your plants healthy I'll join the bugs and leave them alone. In order to get your plants healthy, it's all about the soil, though.
and this year should add lots of minerals back into the soil so um we'll bring you back in about a week and show you what these look like and we'll put more on at that point in time all right this here is the stuff that i've been aerating um since friday today's wednesday so this batch right here has been brewing for what five days so i'm going to take already dip already dipped that full and we'll put it in this backpack spur not the backpack sprayer but this sprayer here and i just got a piece of uh row cover over there so i can kind of filter out all the clumps of crap and whatnot so i don't get stuff stuck in the filter or the so i don't get stuff stuck in the nozzle because it'll make a mess so. and just pour it through here and all the big stuff should stay out of there not foliar feed with this so some things I won't foliar feed everything some things are starting to ripen I'm not gonna spray it on stuff that I'm gonna harvest here in the next couple of days That actually works pretty good when you do that. See that? That there stuff that it filtered out, it would have went down inside the sprayer and I'd have got it stuck in my nozzle and I'd have had problems with it. So, and it's, uh, actually it's probably full enough. So one jug will fill it. So that's good to know. Note to self. That is two gallons. So we'll take this over and spray. So it's in this. this. This here sprayer pumps itself up. It's a pretty snazzy little pump. Um, I'm just going to spray the ginger. I would spray the tomatoes. Some of those look pretty rough, like I said the other day. But there's there's tomatoes actually on them, so I don't want to spray those just for the simple fact that I'll be harvesting off of them. I don't know that it would hurt you, but them tomatoes there's actually starting to turn yellow already. Looking good. I'll just go through here and feed these. Give them a good foliar feeding. And I'll go down in the main garden here in a minute and do some uh, cucumbers and potatoes and that kind of thing. When's the best time of day to do something like this? After the sun goes down or before it comes up, or whichever. Right now it's on Wednesday afternoon. Um, and I got home from work half hour ago. The sun's down in this part of the yard. It's uh, probably five o'clock, five thirty. Down in the main garden, it's sun, still sunny, but um, there's a lot of stuff that's it's cool enough in the, this evening that it won't matter a whole lot to uh, I'll spray it now because the sun's going to be down the next hour down there anyway. So I can spray I can spray down there now and not worry about it. And I'm going to do the potatoes. And I'll just do it just like I did the ginger up above. Um, these here, I'll probably do the tomatoes down here because they're not even close ready to harvest anything yet. And I need to get them hung too, but. Um, then I'll get down through and do all the peppers. I won't. I won't do the onions, and I won't. I won't do the onions or the peas down here because they're ready to harvest. We got a lot of peas that's ready to go right now. So I'm only going to do what isn't ready to harvest right now. So I'm going to do the tomatoes, the peppers, the potatoes, all the peppers. I'll probably do the celery, all the squashes and cucumbers and watermelons. I'll do all that stuff this evening. Um, so yeah, just go through and do it once a week, probably. Just give them a good 
You don't gotta make them wet, or I mean, just you don't gotta drench them. Just give them a good spray. The, spray the leaves good. The potatoes right there is actually starting to flower. They're starting to get flower bulbs on them. If you can see that or not in camera, but they're actually starting to flower already, which is kind of surprising. <clears throat> But this here is all made with weeds, so just weeds, weeds and rainwater. So no chemicals, no, no, no nothing. No, just feed them, just feed them, just put minerals back in is all we're doing basically. Whatever the weeds filtered out of the soil, that's what we're putting back in the soil it's on top. The weeds aren't necessarily a bad thing. Also, too, I'm going to probably, the next time I mow on this side of the garden or on this side of the road, I'm going to bag up the bag up the mower clippings with the bagger and just uh, mulch the potatoes with that, too. So that's another good place for weeds is in your, as mulch in your garden, too. You have a long ways to go, mister. Yep, I'm sorry. Rough job for some of those guys. <laughs> and if it helps the plants, that's always good. like this too but it does have a smell to it so we've done it already in the house it does smell the wife, the wife don't care who wants that the plants love it but the smell can be overwhelming but hey if you love your plants you gotta do what makes them happy All right, let's try this again. I just did this, but didn't have a mic on. This be take two. So this year's um, making making our uh, homemade liquid fertilizer. Basically, all we do, and you could use anything. We use weeds. Um, these are just weeds that we pulled out of the asparagus patch that's on that side of the garden. That you you all that follow me along know know what that is, where that is. Um, so I'm going to put some some of our homemade apple cider vinegar in. Not a whole lot, just like. I don't know, a cup or two full. That's going to be about it. And uh, I have this on this side where the, this garden patch is, right beside our compost bins on this side. Um, so we're just going to fill rainwater up. We use rainwater to water everything with around here. So we're, she's she's up there in the greenhouse now filling up the rainwater. And uh, we're going to pack it down here and fill this up, and then we'll bring some uh, apple cider vinegar down. So this here, this is homemade apple cider vinegar that we made last year when the trees, when the apple trees were uh, produced and done. It actually looks, really looks good too. Um, smells, smells good. So what this here helps extract all the stuff out of the weeds. So I'm just going to put just a little bit in, not a whole lot. That's probably a plenty for this barrel food. basically basically what this does these weeds these weeds mine all the minerals they get long tap roots a lot of them you know there's yarrow and yarrow and some other stuff in there just grasses and whatever I mean it doesn't really matter what you use a lot of times I'll use comfrey and but I don't have any any ready right now the chickens are, chickens are eating all the comfrey that we got so um, I'm gonna let them eat them so basically these, these weeds mine minerals from deep down in where you can't get to, where your regular plants can't go. So they pull it all up and get it 
get them trapped in their cells so so what I do is I do this then I'll fill this barrel clear full of water rain water you can use whatever just don't use uh, tap water if you have city water because all the chlorine will kill the bacteria and whatnot in there um, and you want that to be in there and it doesn't matter if it's aerated or not it doesn't make any difference none of that, none of that stuff matters and not that I've ever noticed I've, I've done it both ways and I've never noticed the difference in, in how it actually works so when, I, when I'm done filling this up every couple days I'll stir it and push it down in and then I'll just keep the lid on so bugs can't get in there so when you get it filled up then you just make sure it's stirred and it's full it's about as full as you're ever going to get it so basically this here is just going to extract all the minerals out of the weeds that the minerals extracted out of the soil or that the weeds extracted out of the soil so this will all turn nasty and will stink to the high heavens but it works so good on your crops it's unreal um, I do this I do this about every I don't know how often I do it I do it a fair bit and the stuff I used the stuff I had used in the um, other stuff that you'd seen in them buck in them jugs was this after it was done and I put it in there you can see it bubbling already so it's already starting to ferment it'll ferment I'll, I'll put I'm gonna put the lid on it so bugs can't take over the world um, and I'll let it ferment and every couple days I'll come out here and stir it I'll probably come out tomorrow and stir it and then again today's Monday so I'll probably come out tomorrow and do it and then I probably won't come out again we'll see what it looks like tomorrow and get from there I may I may wait till Thursday or something or I may do it Wednesday it's hard to tell but make sure you put the lid on otherwise like I say the mosquitoes and fungus gnats and everything else will be in there and just laying their laying eggs alright so today's Wednesday I made this on Monday. I didn't do nothing with it last evening. It was raining all evening. I burned some brush and whatnot. So right now, I'm going to take the lid off after two days. And you can see down in there, it all comes to, it all floated to the top. So you just, I try to mix it around. There's yarrow in there. Actually, that yarrow still looks pretty good. Don't necessarily got to mix it up, just kind of shove it back under. Once, you'll know when it's ready when you can't tell us, you can't tell what the them was weeds. It'll just be a big black pile of mush in the bottom of the barrel. That's when it's done. If you did biochar, you could put that inside here and it would inoculate it in this, in these, uh, in this tea. I don't do biochar. Maybe I should, but I never have. Um, but you could inoculate it in this and still filter it out. There is wood in there, but so just do that every couple days. Usually at first I like to do about every day or two, but um, I didn't get to last evening because like I said it was raining. I didn't feel like walking down here and just burn the brush up by the building. Aggravated the wife and the chickens a little bit last evening. Did you know? Yes, she did. So that's about it. Um, then I'll do that again a couple times and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And then when it's done, that's how we make that stuff up above when the bubbles That's what I use to water with. You can use this here to water with too. You don't have to bubble it. I've used, I've used this for years this way. I've only ever bubbled it one at a time. But what, why do you bubble it for? To put oxygen back in it to kill off all the anaerobic bacteria. It'll die when you pour it on the ground anyway. It doesn't need, it doesn't need air to live, so as soon as you pour it out, it's going to die anyhow. But if you put air in it, it'll put the, good, the better bacteria will be in it already. <laughs> she had a brain fart. That's all right. Sorry about that. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> I put the bubbler in it to kill off the bacteria. The the anaerobic bacteria it'll die off anyways when you pour it out because it don't want air it breathes it don't breathe air i don't know how it is but it don't breathe oxygen so you just put the bubble put it, it put the bubble in it to oxygenate it so it kills that off and all the good bacteria will be in it already that's why you do that but you don't have to it'll die off anyway so it yeah so this one here is the one that i started 
fill it full of weeds and then um put rainwater in there a week or so ago and as you can see now it's just downright nasty so which it's done it's and the reason I know it's done is because the weeds are pretty well pretty well gone it's to the point now if I had a screen if I had a screen I could put over top I would so it'd get a little air but I don't want all them bugs getting in there and laying their eggs and whatnot then we'd have a mosquito fest and I don't want that so um, I'm gonna let it seal it up for now just like it was and it does smell pretty nasty just so y'all know it stinks no doubt about it it stinks um, it's not necessarily a bad thing that it stinks it just means it's just means that it's not getting the air that it should for the anaerobic bacteria to die away then just so the aer aerobic bacteria be all that's left but kind of is what it is um, I'm not going to worry too much about it whenever like I said before earlier in this video that um it doesn't really matter because once the air hits the bacteria it's going to die anyways if you don't like the air it'll die automatically so it doesn't matter i wouldn't spray it on my lettuce but i wouldn't be afraid to spray it on my potatoes or anything else as far as that goes um so i'd like to go through and show you a little bit of what what happened over the last few weeks me using it as as watering and as uh foliar feed um, I'm on the outside of the garden fence. I don't know if I can get you get you in close enough, but um, I'm gonna try to. So it's been about two weeks. I'm gonna walk inside. That'll take care of that whole issue. So about two weeks since I started this um, video showing you how how I make fertilizer. And trust me, this ain't the only way. It might might not even be the best way. I don't know. But I will say. I will say these potatoes over the last couple of weeks and all, all I did was give them one full year feeding Friday a week ago so it's, today's Monday so last Friday I sprayed them with the backpack sprayer and they've doubled in size since then and they're all flowering now I don't know how, you, how good you can see them through out there but they definitely took off since I did that um, and that's not the only thing that happened either we ain't got a whole lot of rain the last couple of weeks, so I know I know it's not from that, but I did not all of it. As you can see right here, this part of it I didn't, but the part down there, down there, I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but it's got like a little growth in the middle of it. Right there, I bagged up our grass clippings and stuck in there, so that helped it as well. It's not just the, it's not just that spray. Um, so there's there's that. Um, also. Also, these uh, peppers right here, I don't know if you can see them or not, they're down, yeah, they're nice and green, they're actually starting to get peppers on them. These are sweet cayennes, they were, they were pretty nasty looking before I started giving them that stuff. The one thing, one thing that makes me a true believer isn't just the peppers or the tomato or potatoes. I got my tomatoes, I, do, I did that with too, and they definitely, a lot of those definitely grow bigger. But, but my squash, since I started using it, the zucchini still get still getting attacked some by the uh, cucumber beetles. But in all honesty, the rest of my squashes and cucumbers and that, they're, they're letting them alone for the most part. I mean, they're not totally letting them alone. I'm still getting some bug damage. Um, the zucchini's probably still the worst. But let me turn you around and show you exactly what I'm talking about. That damage is still there, but them plants probably tripled in size over the last week and a half, two weeks. And I, these I fed one time as watering, and then I sprayed them, foliar fed them once. And I need to foliar feed them again. But walking down through here, you ain't seeing them uh, cucumber beetles on them anymore. I mean, they're still there because you can see damage. There's still damage on that plant. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't take care of it, but. If, couple more feedings and they'll be gone I won't have to worry about them but them watermelons them watermelons right there there's absolutely no damage on them and they're starting to flower even they look really good I don't have any watermelons on yet but 
that uh, makes me a true believer how good that stuff is. These peppers, they got some bug damage on them, but for the most part, and I don't know what bugs eating them. I don't know. If, I don't know if cucumber beetles eat peppers or not, but maybe. But they're looking really good. These are. I think these are jalapenos, early jalapenos is what those are. They look really good. These are peppercinis. They look pretty decent. They're slightly yellow. Cantaloupes, they're, uh, they still have bug damage on them, but they're looking pretty good. I actually got a cantaloupe on there already. It's pretty early for that around here. I think I see another one over here the other day. Yeah, right there. So they're growing. Um, but the watermelons is what's impressive to me so far. And the winter squash, these here are, this This would be a uh, spaghetti squash. And the butternut's down on that end. I guess they probably chew on them some. But it doesn't look like they're doing a whole lot of damage to them. The cucumbers, the cucumbers still need some attention, but they're way better than what they were. The ones that ain't dead, they're actually growing right there. I just seen, I just seen one of them cucumber beetles. It must have got off of it. Right there, see it? Right there. Hope he just jumped. And if it's focusing good enough for you or not. Anyhow, they're still here. I'm not, I'm not saying they're gone, but that stuff definitely helped them out. Um, so it definitely helped out everything except the cucumbers are better and the zucchini is better everything else I think it's pretty much taken care of um, and the peppers I mean look at them more candies and peppers are huge on them things already and those I watered once and foliar fed once so I need to foliar feed again but uh, that tells me that stuff actually works so um, so yeah but anything anything it turns around that quick Anything turns around that quick on something, I'm gonna keep keep using it, especially on the stuff that's got some bug damage. Um, you could use anything. You wouldn't have to use that that uh, mix that I use. You could use um, kelp kelp meal or or uh, fish emulsion or anything like that. Any, any foliar feed and put it in a sprayer and spray it on there would would help for sure, no matter what it is. They just need nutrients. Um, once a good healthy plant. A good healthy plant bugs won't eat it they can't digest it they only go after the weak plant so I guess I guess that being said though if, if the plant is weak if the plant is weak and the bugs are eating it I guess it's you either need to fix it or swap it out so now I do have uh, more zucchini in the greenhouse that I started I'm gonna plant them I'm gonna plant them somewhere else I'm not gonna put them down here um, as far as cucumber goes if I get some I'll get some if I don't I don't I don't really care one way or the other on them I don't personally eat them um, we sell them at the farmer's market. The wife eats them. We do eat pickles. Um, I don't know. We, we don't really need any this year. We have enough left from last year that we don't need no pickles. But um, if I get cucumbers, great. If not, whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nurse them a couple more weeks. I will update up, update you all on this again this, this summer before summer's over to show you how good it's doing. And I'll keep talking about it throughout all the other videos. Um, I know this video here is pretty long and lengthy, but if you stuck around, thank you. Um, hopefully you learned something from it. Um, if you got any ideas on something different or better that works better than, and it's cheaper than what I do, which is not cheaper because that's free this time. So um, if you got anything that you use that's special that works good for you, that you had good results for, just let me know um, in the comments if you would. So I'm going to get off here for this one. Um, I'm sure there's stuff that I've missed. Once I get through and start editing this video and I see something that I didn't talk about that I want to, I'll come back out and discuss it some more. So, But until then, I'm going to wrap this video up. I know it's a pretty long one. So uh, until we meet again, take care and God bless.